to wake up this morning <laughs> after the pub crawl. I'm here to talk about a, establishing a successful security metrics program. Is the cameras are on? Everything's rolling? Um, my name is Andrew Sedbury, and I'm the Vice President of Metrics for ClearPoint Metrics. We make a software product that is used uh, to uh, automate security metrics programs and communicate the results in the forms of scorecards. And I'm here today to talk about and share all the lessons uh, that we've learned about establishing a, a successful security metrics program um, in an organization. So uh, there's not really a big secret to this. I'll tell you the answer right now is that what you want to do to create a successful security metrics program is to create metrics that are tied directly to business goals. Otherwise, they're not particularly relevant to the, your business audiences, nor are they particularly useful. Uh, just security metrics for their own sake, just tracking cool numbers and data is kind of interesting, but doesn't matter to the business unless it's tied to something that they're actually trying to accomplish. The second big thing is to make sure that you communicate in terms that are understandable. So not things like we blocked 922 viruses, but things like uh, all of the systems that we use uh, for critical delivery of our, of our services have twice as many vulnerabilities as the ones that we use to check our email on. And the final thing is you need to provide regular and repeated communication. So you need to have metrics programs that occur uh, regularly, say every week, every month, and so forth, so you can actually see what happens as you make decisions and get, actually close a feedback loop between activities and results. Um, so this is what we're going to talk, these are the things we're going to talk about to get to that successful program. The first thing is, you know, I'm going to talk a little bit about why organizations actually want security metrics. I'll give you some uh, findings that we've, we've done in a survey of, you know, with 100 CISOs about where they are with metrics today. And then um, I'll go through my, my process for establishing a successful metrics program. And I'll reiterate the, the critical lessons that you hopefully will have learned um, at the end of this. So let's talk a little bit about security metrics. It's pretty, it's pretty much a hot topic right now. Everyone's sort of heard a lot about it. There's some fantastic books written by people with names like mine out there. Um, and these are the types of things that we're talking about. So these right here are fairly technical indicators, but there's something that's a little bit different about them that I want to point out to make sure we're all on the same page with what a metric is. It's not strictly speaking just a measurement. It's a measurement about something with some kind of context or analysis built into it. So if you look at some of these, it's not just um, you know, how many systems have active antivirus. It's how is that trending? Or what is that compared to all the rest of my systems? And how is that distributed across the assets in my organization? Or by the different operating systems I have in my organization and so forth? Um, what I'm not going to do, so these are some examples of metrics that you know, Global 2000 organizations are actually using today. Um, what I'm not going to do in this talk is say, these are the 12 metrics that you absolutely need in order to be a good program. Um, what I'm going to talk about is how you can use metrics like these to successfully communicate the state um, and trends and changes in your security programs, how that relates to the business, and what you should actually do next, and how you communicate that um, up and out of IT departments. So why do companies want security metrics? I mean, these are the things that they want them for. They were trying to figure out what's happening, are they doing enough, and what should they do next? Uh, and these things, so basically, you know, every day management's faced with decisions around um, how to allocate resources, whether or not they should change various parts of their business, whether or not they should enter new businesses, um, and whether or not they are complying with various uh, regulatory regimes and so forth. And uh, these questions are not just purely academic things that you'd like to know or would be really nice to know. All of the answers to these kinds of questions have real impact on where you invest your time, your money, your people, uh, technologies, and whether or not you can actually successfully uh, execute the business plans that you have um, in mind. And furthermore, these questions are being answered is implicitly every day by what the organization does on a day-to-day -day basis, whether or not they hire new people, whether or not they buy various software packages, um, and so forth. Uh, and so ideally, uh, you know, security managers have a, generally have a difficult time 
justifying what they think should happen in an organization, what changes ought to be made, because generally they're doing this without any real evidence. It's just their gut instinct. And so with sort of data to back up your qualitative assessments, you really can start to uh, interact successfully with the business side of things and not just wait and rely for a, on a, a BBE or a big bad event to actually bring together um, business and security in an organization. So we went out and we sort of confirmed these, these thoughts by interviewing well over 100 CISOs um, in a variety of organizations um, and came up with, um, you know, found out a couple of things such as, you know, basically all companies want metrics. Some companies are actually producing metrics right now. And most companies could really use help uh, making effective use of metrics. And, and you can see some of the details. I, the slides, I presume, would be distributed after the fact. But there's the who, the why, the what, the when, the where, and the how of security metrics. Um, I'll give you a couple of highlights here. Uh, the what is the primary driver for why they want metrics is, like I mentioned, to basically integrate and align security with business objectives. So they want to know, you know, if we take these business actions, if we open our network to outsourcers, if we you know, integrate our business operations with these other third parties, um, if we start these online services, you know, will they be secure, will they be safe, you know, will we be, we be able to enable the security we need to accomplish our business goals? Um, a lot of these things are based, if you look at the what column, around you know, relatively bread and butter security things, such as access control, such as vulnerability management, such as patching. Um, an additional driver is, of course, compliance reporting. Um, there's a lot of new things, SOX especially, PCI, that are requiring people to sort of re report on a regular basis. And so being able to do that more easily would be a nice thing. Um, and when they do produce these metrics, uh, Generally, these are being produced. This is not knock and sock type of, of stuff. This isn't real time metrics where I'm seeing graphs and bars and alerts go flashing off all the time. This is management time scale stuff. This is daily, weekly, monthly metrics that are used to actually make decisions around who they hire, how they organize themselves, and what they buy. Uh, generally, uh, most of these organizations can actually use help making these programs effective. Um, what they're actually doing, generally, is cutting and pasting from consoles into Excel and trying to use, use that as the means by which they actually deliver um, their security metrics to the organization. And left to, left to those devices, you won't have a particularly effective program. And I'll go through why all of that's the case uh, later on. I'm going to start with an a example of, um, of a, you know, a clear example of why security metric would really be help impact an organization. So you've probably all seen this before. This is from that fantastic Windows of Vulnerability article that was published a number of years ago that went out and took um, a look you know, globally at intrusions based on um, you know, known exploits and took a look at how were the incidents of occurrence uh, based on time from when it was first dis the vulnerability was first discovered to when it was corrected and patches were released to when uh, the exploit was scripted. And you can see, of course, there's a trend where you know, all the exploits happen you know, quite some time after the vulnerability is first known about and about when it could have been patched. And from these kinds of metrics, all kinds of people like Dan Gear are coming up with fantastic ideas around fundamental relationships, about security processes, what that means for best practices, what they should be, how that's changing the underlying technologies and how that should be all addressed. And all that stuff's fantastic. But that's still a little bit different than what we're talking about. We're talking about stuff that's very germane to a specific organization. For instance, if I go back to this first chart of, of the time series and when organizations um, or when intrusions occur, you know, what I really want to know, given that I'm in this kind of world, is um, you know, what should my strategy around patching be and how should I view that whole security process? And if I had the metric like, what's my mean time to patch from the patch release as it, as it goes through all my internal testing processes, and I, we actually do the work of pushing patches out to all the different servers in my organization, you know, how long does that take? You know, if I'm this company, if I'm company A here, you know, well, maybe I've got, a good, I've got a good handle on this. I'm taking reasonable practices. I'm not going to get sued if something goes wrong. And you know, maybe there's not much more I can do to defend myself in this particular manner. And if I want to, you know, if I need to increase security, there's other things I'm going to need to do. Versus if I'm company B over here, well, clearly I've got a long way to go. 
I either need to start investing time, money, and resources into improving my patching process, or maybe, and then I need to see how that changes to see if my dollars are actually having an effect, or maybe I need to abandon this as a method of defense entirely and just focus on repair and recovery instead, because I just obviously can't accomplish this particular task in a meaningful way. And then furthermore, assume that I'm a large organization, I'd really like to know where all the different parts of my organization fall, whether my retail stores are better and worse than my R&D labs, um, whether my critical systems are being patched faster or slower than my non-critical systems and so forth. Um, all of these have real implica implications on how I should manage my security processes and whether or not I'm going to be able to accomplish my business goals. If I can't keep my, uh, my boxes patched that are used for an online uh, business, then maybe that shouldn't be you know, where I bet the future of my company. So to sum up, these are basically all of the drivers for security metrics. It's all the things I've mentioned. It's you need to be able to monitor progress toward goals to see if you're actually getting where you're trying to get to um, over time. You need to know where you should allocate your resources. You need to make sure that what you're doing relates to um, the business objectives and that you can sort of prove that you're able to support the business goals. Um, and that you can do things like ensure that you're compliant with various regulatory regimes, whether that's PCI, whether that's SOX, and that you're applying best practices and taking reasonable steps with reasonable management oversight uh, to manage your security practices. Now, I mentioned that uh, some organizations uh, are having some challenges around security metrics. Um, and the reason that they're having issues are generally around these three things. They don't know what to measure. They don't know how to measure it successfully and they don't know how to communicate it. This is really what it comes down to. Um, and even the what to measure side isn't that they're not using these 12 magic metrics, but they're not measuring the right kinds of things in their organization. All that's very dependent on who you are and what you're trying to accomplish. And what they're actually doing generally when we see people with programs is they've actually got too much of the wrong kind of metrics. So they're flooding themselves with all kinds of uh, dumps from consoles that gives them, as, as I mentioned before, that gives them counts of metrics that are quarantined, uh, sorry, viruses that are quarantined, just global counts of vulnerabilities, that kind of thing. You really just don't convey any meaning to manager, managers or business people or anyone who's not rooted in, that, in, a, in a technical background. And even then, those kinds of counts have no meaning unless you're looking at how they're changing over time, what that is relative to other organizations and so forth. Um, and they have too few of the right kind of metrics, which are things that are tied directly to the things the business is trying to accomplish. Uh, are the, you know, vulnerabilities on boxes that are used by customers. Um, you know, viruses or trojans on boxes that have PI information and so forth. Uh, and some of those are hard to do because the data is rarely all in one place. So just because you have scan results from a scanning system, nothing in that scanning system is going to tell you that these are the boxes that, you know, matter most for my business goals for the year. And so there's some difficulty tying those kinds of data together, which is why they generally don't have many of those kinds of metrics. When they go to measure things, um, it takes far too much effort to produce, produce the metrics. I mean, they're spending a lot of time doing this, dumping into Excel, trying to massage it into Excel. Um, and when you come out of this, you really have no transparency in your metrics process at all. So you don't actually know where the results came from, where that data came from in many cases, you're just being presented with final products, and you have no idea how those were really calculated, if they're being done on a regular basis, whether or not they're being done the same way. And we've actually seen organizations where it takes well over a month to produce their monthly metrics. And at that point, you've lost all context to what decisions were being made, what the state of things were when those metrics were produced, why things changed, and so forth. And on the communication side, there's just not enough publication of results. As I mentioned, if it takes you, if you publish, uh, if the publication lags dramatically, you're just not going to understand what was happening when. You won't really have a feedback cycle like you want. You'll just sort of be retrospe retroactively looking at numbers that at that point have no context. And when people do produce, or release, and publish these metrics, they tend to take all of those data points they've dumped into Excel and give sort of one mass blast workbook out to everyone that's got you know, 20, 30 different tabs on it. It just isn't a useful way to actually share and communicate metric results. Everyone gets to see the same pile of metrics. It's not relevant to the particular audience who receives them. And it's just hard to wade through. 
really what people need to see are things that look more like this. And here's an example. Um, I had a little bit of trouble with my screenshot, so I apologize that it's cut off. But what you're looking at here is basically a single scorecard around uh, antivirus and spyware. It's published you know, weekly for a particular weekend. It's published in some sort of regular fashion every week and has been for some time. You can more or less, I don't know if you can read it, but fairly clearly see that you've got overall antivirus coverage. Green means that that's the percentage of my systems that are covered. Orange is where my agents are stale, so my coverage is, is suspect. And red is the percentage of my systems that don't have coverage. Um, I have commentary in the blue from the particular owner of that security process, so we can enhance and in, in, uh, explain to the business people, executives, board, whoever it might be, what it is that they're actually looking at and why that matters and how that matters and what they should be looking at. And down here, you can see that one of the things that this particular organization cared about a lot was um, the compliance regimes of the various servers. So here they're actually reporting some of this antivirus coverage information for this particular snapshot um, by the different uh, regulations that apply to those servers, whether it be SOX or PCI and so forth. So, what, so those are some of the things that distinguish an effective program. Basically, it's relatively reasonably understandable metrics. They're actionable in the sense that you can see you know, these SOX boxes, I need to improve coverage there, or I'm going to be prevented from uh, processing credit card transactions if these PI, PCI boxes aren't changed, or I need to invest resources there. They're tied to the business context, and there's regular repeatable production of the metrics themselves. And the way that you get to this, these kinds of scorecards is through the seven-step process. We're working really hard to make it six steps to increase the overall level of efficiency, but we're still at seven right now. Um, when we set, started to put these metrics in place, or metrics programs in place, we actually came across um, a series of seven steps that was initially proposed by Shirley Payne in a guide to security metrics that was published by SANS, which was a great start for us. We've modified um, the various steps based on our actual field experience, putting these programs into place, and we fleshed out a few of the areas. Uh, but basically, these are the steps, and what you are doing here is, is really the critical part is you're starting top-down with what are the goals and objectives of the business and of my metrics program, and then what do I want to know in order to accomplish those goals. Then you basically stop, so that's steps one and two, and then you basically stop, and now you take a bottom-up approach and say, okay, now that I know what I want to know, how do I produce these metrics? What data sources do I have? Where do I not have data? How would I go about increasing my instrumentation and so forth? And then you worry about what should the format look like? How do I map this to what my managers expect to see? And then you worry about implementing the metrics, establishing baselines and targets, and bringing this all into a regular part of your management decision-making processes. And these steps are critical. Uh, each one has a real purpose and an output that he speaks to the, sort of the critical things that are required for a security metrics program. By defining the goals and objectives, you make these immediately useful. You make them really interesting to business people because they're tied to things they're actually trying to accomplish. Um, you make sure that you're producing the right types of answers for the managers. You figure out what you can actually produce now and how you can make things better over time. With step four, you're actually making sure that each audience will get metrics that are relevant um, to what, what their piece of the puzzle. And then, of course, you make sure you have regular production. Um, you can establish goals to really drive uh, operational change and make this part of your overall governance, regulatory, and compliance processes. So I'm going to go through each one of these steps to sort of give you some key things you need to do in every one to make sure that you're getting things. Uh, you, you will be effective when you go to do this at your own organizations. Um, the critical part with defining goals and objectives is to make sure that these are tied to business goals not just uh, goals of your security department like, geez, we'd really like to have you know, this kind of um, deep packet inspection by the end of the year, but why does that matter to uh, the business? Because we want to you know, have this kind of new online service or have this type of, of uh, you know, outside access to our networks and so forth. Um, I'll go through some examples. I'll sort of walk through an example through these seven steps. But really, this establishes a whole new way, a whole new paradigm for communicating um, with business people from security by keeping it tied to the kinds of things that they care about. When you go to figure out what you need to know, uh, the way I do this is to 
walk through the decision-making processes that these your audience is going to face and do this in essentially English language sentences. So uh, uh, when you're done with this, you basically have a list of the questions you want answers for. You can then prioritize your information goals by actually even doing first order approximations of what would the value um, to knowing this, the answer to this question be. Um, and then finally, you, you develop these metrics models where basically what I do is I take all the questions on the left side of the page, I list all the systems that I know exist in my, my organization, and I throw them into different buckets. And by the time I'm done, I can see where it looks like I have data for metrics and where I don't have anything. And then I can actually sort of create a roadmap on how to increase my instrumentation level based on that prioritization of my information needs that I've done in step two. So let's walk through a, an individual example. So this is going to be a little bit quick because um, there's sort of a broad range of stuff I want to cover. But hopefully this will give you sort of a, a more clear idea. So let's assume my business goal is to deliver online services. And so I've got some sort of, I, that's filtered down to an IT initiative, which is basically to protect the infrastructure and minimize disruptions to service. And what that means in a near, near term goals for my security team is that we need to make sure that we're doing these kinds of things. So let's take a, a look at the uh, sort of AV malware slice. You know, what are we doing to stop malware? What's the impact in the organization going to be? And what's that going to cost us? If I knew these kinds of things, I'd, I'd have some real information about go, no go decisions um, for my business. Uh, so let's start. So this is my, my sort of one and two steps. Let's come up with some of these met what these metrics would be. So on the first one, if are my systems protected against malware, I'd like to know things like, do I have AV installed and up to date? And I need to know that as the percentage of my systems. Um, so I need to know, therefore, the number of systems and the, that have AV that's up to date and the total number of systems. And I can walk through each one of these questions this way and get down to what the metrics are. So this is a way that it's easier to understand what you want to measure rather than trying to just sort of list every security metric that you think has value. You're still doing it from this top-down context of what do you want to know. And on the impact in the organization side, you know, I'd like to know how many viruses still get through, assuming that I have defenses. How long does it take me to resolve those virus infections when they occur? And to know that, I need to know things like the duration of tickets, um, how much time does it take, how many tickets, what's the cost of my labor, and so forth. Um, and now to find data sources, you know, I, do, I put all my questions on the left side, I throw all my data sources on the right, and they start to line up. And generally, you, you'd be surprised at how well they line up nicely. There's issues of, of granularity and resolution that we find when um, we go to do this in organizations where they do like to know a lot more about support tickets especially. Support tickets end up being very fuzzy, and so it's hard to capture some of that kinds of things in organizations. Um, but you can also use things like estimates as a starting point and decide how you're going to create that roadmap that over time increases that level of instrumentation. Now, one important thing here that I'm going to spend some time talking about is I haven't, so far, these metrics look more or less like the standard security counts that I've been sort of railing against a little bit earlier. And uh, what you need to do to, to these metrics is add dimensions that provide that business context. So this is really where you need to figure out how you're going to determine these answers by things like the organizational structure, uh, so different divisions, departments, um, by types of users, by asset values, by what business services and applications those systems support, um, and whether or not they fall under different regulatory regimes, SOX, and so forth, uh, as well as other things. I and mean, you can think there's sort of an endless list of ways in which you'd like to slice and dice uh, data in an organization. This is really a key value-added step to security metrics and what most people are not really currently doing for a couple of reasons. One being it's a little bit tricky. You have to actually fuse different data silos together to do this. Um, and generally, this is just not the way that security people tend to think. But this is definitely the way that business people think. And this is the way that things need to be reported to really help them understand what their risk really is um, and what actions need to be taken and need to be taken. So if I go back to this, to the, this ex example we're working through, you know, what I'd like to add in this particular example is things like um, by the different divisions in my organization, since one of my divisions is going to be responsible or is entirely composed of this online service, and whether or not um, those systems have different compliance requirements. Because I'm going to be taking processing online, or credit cards online, and so payment card industry data security standards come into play. And then when on the impact side, I need to see 
who in the organization is feeling this pain? So what groups are, are you know, getting viruses? Because if it's just sort of uh, a bunch of random desktops that I don't care much about, you know, that's a cost I can easily absorb. And then what does that compare to what I've actually budgeted? So there's going to be always some cost of doing business. I mean, sort of by definition, uh, things that happen are zero day. And um, you can't necessarily stop all viruses just with antivirus software, obviously. So what is the result, residual cost that we're experiencing as an organization? Is that acceptable or not? And so forth. So I lost my mouse. Um, uh, right. So now that we've got those, those parts nailed down of what we want to measure, we now can figure out how we want to report this to the organization. And here we're talking about identifying an audience, so knowing who you're going to report to and why they care about those metrics. Again, because they're tied to some business goals they're trying to accomplish. And the way you should communicate is through scorecards. Uh, and scorecards, as we define them, basically, you assemble a series of metric results together to provide a complete picture. So I'm going to show you, you know, antivirus coverage. I also need to show you what still got through, what are the resulting incidents that still got through. So I can start to actually tell a story around whether or not I should invest more or less if those defenses matter or if they don't. If I just said, great, we've got 95% AV coverage, that's, not, that's definitely not a complete story. I mean, what still gets through? Does that matter if it gets through? What boxes are affected and so forth? Um, and that's really a way to provide metric results to audiences in a way that they, that they want them. And uh, one other thing is that really you need to publish scorecards in both a format, a visual format, a layout and so forth, and on a time schedule that maps with the existing uh, management decision-making processes. So you want to enhance the meetings that they're, they're already having with metric results rather than trying to create this whole parallel stream of meetings just to talk about metrics. Really, you want them to start to use metrics to supplement their existing decision-making activities. And it's key that you're communicating up and out of your organization to drive change. Uh, and then that's how it will happen. In an ideal world, and the world that we would espouse, you should have lots of scorecards, each one tailored directly to a specific audience, but all based on the same underlying set of data. So in this particular picture, you know, I still have down here a whole series of operational security, <coughs> security metrics and scorecards that can be used you know, internally with lots of rich uh, details and data points um, that my security team wants to see. And, I, and then I might have security managers where I roll up across those different uh, you know, fine-grained security activities to take a look at things like what's my end-to-end -end, you know, entire domain of vulnerability management or host hardening and so forth. And from there, you can pick and choose key performance indicators that are tied directly to either business goals, like establishing an online service, or enabling um, outsourced development, or enabling third-party access directly to our back-end systems, uh, and provide report, you know, reports to business people on those key uh, indicators that are tied directly to what they care about, or create other scorecards that re are, are just focused on compliance topics, um, audit topics, uh, SOX topics and so forth, and even roll those up to sort of overall executive views all the way if you wanted to, to be indicators on balanced scorecards even at a board level, which we've seen before. Um, so now that you, it's, you have everything in mind that you want to design, you know you have this vision for what you want your security metrics program to be, the next step is to actually go and start to build and implement these metrics. And uh, there's a couple things I'm going to say about that, and I'll go back to that example. The key thing here is that However you build them, you need to make it something that you can do uh, reliably the same on a fairly regular basis. You can One-off analyses are interesting but have very limited um, context. You don't really know if you did it right. It's sort of just a one-off game. And they're useful for some point decision making. But you really need to be able to see metrics change over time and have that feedback loop so that you can understand, I made this decision under these circumstances. This was a result. And that was you know, successful or not. Um, one big reason for this is that, one, you know, actual change in organization takes time, and we're talking days, months, weeks. I mean, if you decide to double the size of your security team, you're not going to see change for months down the road, presumably. And um, it's also much, much better to be directionally accurate and, uh, rather than precise and to have consistent measurements um, over time to let you really get a handle on what's happening rather than really fretting about, you know, did I count you know, every single one of my 200,000 systems. 
it just doesn't matter in the aggregate. It's ma it matters more that every time I took this sample to see where I was and to take my temperature, I did it the same way every time. And I can see that, look, it's going up or down. And I can rely on that. Uh, so if we go back to our example, the way I'm actually, I would actually implement metrics like these in an organization is you know, I'd pull data from an antivirus system you know, using a JBC query, if it's Trend Micro or EPO or something like that, um, to get my total number of systems for now. In many cases, I've relied just on estimates you know, or manual counts people did, um, purchase orders, they know what they bought. Uh, that's you know, not as precise as you'd want, but later on you can say, okay, you know, when this, that asset management system finally comes, you know, finally gets deployed, we'll, we'll pull from that. Or you, we can pull from you know, network sc discovery scans and so forth. Um, and then when I want to get to that level of actually adding that organizational um, context to it, you know, maybe I can join, you know, we, we often join uh, you know, with asset management databases on host names, on IP ranges is actually very common, which sounds sort of kludgy, but it you know, really still works well enough. And it, like, the value of having some idea of, of how this relates to the organization is just much, much greater than worrying about being absolutely precise. Um, and for things like under compliance requirements, you know, we've gone, we'll just read a spreadsheet in some cases. You know, everyone's got, they've had PwC in, they've had auditors come in, they've had produce some lists of here's the systems you care about. In some cases, just start with like the 10 servers you know matter most in the organization. That's your high value assets. Use that if you don't have a complicated scoring schema for your assets and so forth. Um, here's how we would do the impact side is basically we'd rely on, you know, trouble ticket systems. Um, maybe you want to create such a system if it doesn't already exist. In most cases, obviously, it exists. But maybe the resolution isn't what you want. So you don't, have the, you don't actually track durations on tickets. Basically, you open the ticket and then close it immediately once you've solved it, rather than you know, opening the ticket, entering the time you've worked on, and so forth. Um, later on, you can maybe enhance the data collection part of your tickets to say, how many machines did I work on, and so forth. Um, and then you know, you maybe you're parsing, you're pars parsing uh, cost center codes, or even taking a look at who the reporter of the ticket was, and then going back to 80 to figure out where they sit, parse their code to figure out where, that, where they sit in that organization. And for budgets and things like that, if you could do an extract to some kind of Oracle financials, or just, again, read data from a spreadsheet or a CSV file and just hard code it. I mean, some of these things, whether it's estimates of labor or whether it's um, you know, budgets, those things are not changing that frequently. It's totally acceptable to use annual estimates or annual data points, quarterly data points, monthly data points. Um, and then once you have this sort of regular repeated system in place, then you can start to establish benchmarks and critically targets. You need to establish targets and goals so you can actually start to drive a change over time. But you don't want to do that right away. You need to gain a little bit of exposure, understanding and experience with the metrics you have. So first, put them in place, baseline where you are, then you can have a meeting where everyone agrees, this is what the business goal is. We need to get to these levels. We want to stay in these ranges. This is what red, yellow, green means to us. And then you can start to manage to those types of uh, colors once you have that uh, type of experience and regular measurement system in place. And then the next step is, or the final step, is to make this part of a formal management process. So really, you know, things are going to change in your organization. Systems are going to change. Uh, the environment will change, uh, the risks will change, the business goals will change, and you want to make sure that your metrics change with those. So you need to make sort of the metrics management process part of your existing management processes. So when you have your annual meeting where you say, these are our new business goals for 2009, you should also, as part of that meeting, decide what are the scorecards that we'd want to track our progress to those goals. Um, it might not be in the same meeting, it might be in that sub-IT meeting or sub-security meeting you have after the fact but it should be part of a regular reviewed life cycle process. Um, and you want, it, you want to keep the scorecards you're most interested in, the ones that are tied to the current active uh, business initiatives. That's really how you're going to drive results with a metrics program in an organization. Uh, now clearly, you know, metrics can evolve and to get to the really fancy stuff that everyone gets really excited about like uh, deviations from norms, predictions, correlations, and so forth. And all that stuff is great and um, is high value. But either way, you need a foundation of regular, reliable uh, measurements that everyone has agreed to, understands where they came from, to get to any of this stuff. If you just walk into your first meeting and say, you know, I, I've shown that the 
co coefficient of correlation between AV coverage and number of times we have visitors is, is X. You know, no one's going to either A, care, or B, believe you, and C, it probably doesn't have any meaning anyways. You certainly haven't established that. Um, so what you want to do is have this reliable system in place, start with things that are relatively simple, like counts percentages, and then work your way towards things that matter more, especially as you've accumulated a richer body of data, as other organizations start to, to uh, gather metrics like this as well. So you can actually do sort of peer-to-peer -peer comparisons and baselines. I mean, really, all the value, as I mentioned before, is in doing it at all. And then you can incrementally increase that over time um, as you can handle greater and increasing complexity of metrics. Um, so let me sort of get back to my example, which I'm going to show you that scorecard again that we talked about before. So that's basically how we would have produced a scorecard like this for AV coverage that has sort of compliance issues and showing you overall coverage and how that's trending over time. We also have, uh, I have that impact scorecard here um, as well. And this is sort of a fancy one I want to spend a little bit of, of time on. So let me sort of blow this one up. This is a scorecard we made that shows um, uh, the impact of malware on an organization. And there's a couple things here I want to point out. And uh, everything I say is going to be in the slides. You'll see all these little boxes. But let me just walk through it uh, myself for now, which is the first thing you might notice is that we have analysis and recommended actions right there at the top. So this is how a security individual is successfully communicating to management what should be done with a whole bunch of data to back up their assertions. It shows the current period, oops, my mouse is uh, lost, the current period impact by department, where you're looking at, it's probably hard to read, but they didn't, this particular organization did not want dollar costs, so everything's shown as full-time equivalent days, so person days of effort, which is a little bit esoteric, but it's a, a fairly sophisticated, numerically driven company, so that this is what we went with, even though I violate a little bit some of the simplicity guidelines I mentioned earlier. Um, and that blue line is what they budgeted for. So they can see who's feeling the pain, and is, is it greater or worse than they want it to be. Over here on the left, if I can find my mouse again, I'm taking a look at um, that malware impact on the organization over time, so I can see how, what got me to this current period state, and how did that compare overall to, uh, to what I budgeted. In this case, the blue is the hard dollar cost of recovery, and the red is so soft costs where they've estimated lost productivity. And I'm actually not a huge fan of those kinds of numbers at this stage in metrics for most, most companies, but this is what they wanted, this is what they got. And down here, I've got two sets of indicators that let me understand where I got to those dollar costs, which is, you know, is it a technical issue? So is it my coverage that's a problem? Do I not have sufficient coverage? And if my coverage dramatically changed, is it because the volume of my systems changed. So did I acquire a company, double the number of boxes I have under management, and therefore I, I got some coverage changes and impacts? Or is it a result of um, the process I used to, res to respond to that residual pain that gets through my um, AV systems? So how, much, how many tickets am I responding to per, per resource in the organization? So do I, need, do I need more resources there? And how long does it take them to fix it? So is the complexity of the repairs getting greater, or do I need to allocate more resources? Um, and so th hopefully this has given you an example of uh, the key lessons that I've been trying to convey that are required for a successful security metrics program. You know, one, start with near-term deliverables that are directly tied to business initiatives and goals to make them useful. And it's critical that as you're doing this, you have the end goal of communicating up and out in your organization. That's how you're going to drive change. And make sure the relevant scorecards for your audience that they can actually understand with metrics they can understand that are tied to things that they're aware of, such as the divisions that they think of, not data centers or asset groups, um, their customer base, and so forth. And that this is all done regularly as part of a repeatable system. So they can actually have that feedback loop from plan, you know, execute, uh, determine what happened, and then plan again. And again, communication is really what matters the most. The whole idea here is to use metrics to drive change in an organization. So you need to have scorecards that are tied directly to the goals you're trying to achieve. S communicate those effectively, and then you'll get the results that you're seeking. So I left, I want to leave some time for questions now. I guess I'll ask the first one, since I have the microphone. And that is, uh, who here is actually using security metrics in their organization? Is anyone? Who, who, <laughs> 
Yeah, yeah go ahead. Just not related to what you're saying. Okay. Uh, as, as far as metrics go, we have evaluation forms that we'd love you to fill out before you finish. Oh, right. They handed them out at the beginning. Okay. I'll do that now. While okay, sure. Um, any questions? Any general questions? Or what are you doing with metrics? Well, personally, me, I'm, I'm not. My, my okay, your organizations? Do you think, are they, do they follow any of these kinds of guidelines, or are they basically just giving you a paste from? Um, they do, but I, I think, honestly, they're probably more towards here's where my initiative comes, showing that it's working rather than really looking at Okay, sure. So I mean, we've definitely seen people who want scorecards and metrics that uh, show basically the value of an investment that's been made. So you know, we, we switched to a federated identity system. Did that matter? Was it worth the, you know, and million dollars that we spent on it and so forth. Anyone have any other questions? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. So the question was, I guess I should have repeated Matt's earlier question. Um, have we seen people incorporate security metrics into sort of existing management reports, HR reports and so forth? Uh, just a little bit, and mostly at very high levels. So we've seen uh, CIO and board reports where they've added um, uh, security metric stuff in there. But that everyone wants to do that. Everyone is trying to do that now. It's a fairly young space. And um, we definitely have seen people add metrics sort of a little bit in the other direction, where they have maybe some kind of security intranet or portal, and they're putting security metrics, they're exposing metrics in there internets and portals. So it's a little bit of a different twist where basically they're pushing out, because generally the security, currently the security metrics are demands on the security department made by high level executives rather than other business, a line of business peers requesting things from from um, security department. But that means that the security departments have been, besides reporting up at very high level, board levels and so forth, they're trying to push metrics out um, in their existing security internet, security portals, you know, here's the percentage of people that have had awareness training. Here's where we are, you know, with some high-level high indicators based on our goals. And certainly, uh, one thing we see tons of integration with existing reports is on audit and compliance. Everyone wants scorecards for audit and compliance. Um, that makes it, you know, less onerous and painful to to report these kinds of things. Any other questions? Yeah. So who drives what metrics you really want? Like, is it the security group? Is it the IT group? Is it they have to all get together at a table and figure it out. Like. Sure. So the question was, who drives what metrics actually get uh, get reported? Is it the IT groups, security groups, and so forth? Um, generally, it's uh, we've seen an, a trend for sort of a new portion of the security departments, which is not the operational people, but people who are uh, sort of risk departments um, and, uh, and sort of security governance groups, I guess. So this sort of this new animal that we're seeing in a lot of, of the larger organizations. Those are the ones that, that drive it, and they're sort of a hybrid business analyst slash technical um, individual. Um, generally, the final decision as to what to report is left up to the security-focused individuals. Um, you know, they're given some mandate, like in the case of they don't have that kind of group. You know, I need a report for the board like this. This needs to be part of your regular you know, monthly CIO, CISO's report. Um, and then they'll turn around, the disk gets turned around, the request gets passed down to the security individuals who ultimately end up making these decisions, which is one of the reasons why having a process like this we found to be very helpful. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Well, what would be your guidance for organizations that don't have a risk, clearly defined risk group or compliant, compliance group? Uh, have you run into any organizations like that? Uh, so the question was, what's, what's our advice for organizations that don't have a clearly defined risk or compliance group? Um, I think that anyone can do it. Um, I think that it's almost uh, behooves security individuals to start to communicate this way, especially if they want to be effective. Um, a lot of security organizations are maturing and are starting to have sort of this, sort of this new need for um, you know, process focus and so forth. And so the way what I would do if I was essentially like a, a you know, CISO in all but title or something like that in an organization, um, I would do it myself. And I would use a process like this, and I would start to I'd pick some you know one area, one business initiative that I know is is new and critical to the organization, and start to self-report metrics around that. You know, not, not too many things, maybe only seven things, five things, but things that are directly relevant to what um, 
what the, the people I'm going to be talking with care about, I guess. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? So I think our time is, is essentially up. I'd like to thank you all for attending, and um, thanks for coming to Source. <laughs>
somewhere on there? Yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll check the levels. All right. <laughs> no, this is like putting on a flower or something. Yeah. All right. I'll just put it right here. Cool. You don't use presenters? Yeah. Can I talk about it? No. Um, you, uh, it shows the, so basically you project something different than is on your screen. So on oh. your screen you see the whole list of all yeah. your slides. You have a clock uh, and your notes. It's awesome. Yeah, I brought a clock. Yeah, I saw I'm low tech. Yeah. <laughs>